Welcome back to the course on computer network and internet protocols. Uh, so, in the last class, uh, we were discussing about the concept of software defined networking and uh, we have looked into the basic architecture for the software defined networking and the broad concepts around that. Uh, so, today we will uh, gradually go towards an implementation perspective of the uh, software defined networking and the software component of it where the routers or the network devices are software controlled. Uh, so, we will look into that uh, what type of software or uh, which software will actually control this entire networking architecture. Uh, so, in this context we will uh, look into a specific open source protocol implementation which is called OpenFlow and uh, in a subsequent classes we will look into a demonstration of uh, ISTN network by utilizing OpenFlow protocol stack. Uh, so, let us go to the details of that. Uh, so, as we are discussing that uh, traditionally the in the network community the innovation is a closed innovation. So, closed innovation means in a single box we have the individual components uh, or individual networking components which should be there. Like here uh, if you just follow this diagram uh, you have the packet forwarding hardware, the network operating system and uh, different kind of networking application everything is bounded on the uh, single bounding box. So, this contains the router hardware. So, you can talk it as a router. So, this contains the router hardware and inside the router you have the hardware component which is implemented in TCAM or in traditional router it is CAM. So, one of this type of hardwares. On top of that we have the network operating system that actually implements the different kind of networking protocols and the routing control protocols. And on top of that we have different kind of applications like the firewall application, the packet forwarding applications which are there inside the router. Now, uh, whenever you purchase a single router this entire bounding box that comes from a vendor and that is why we call it as a closed innovation. So, Closed innovation basically says that well uh, both the hardware as well as software along with the applications which are associated with your uh, network functionalities everything is coming from the same vendor as the same package. As a result the problem comes in terms of first interoperability, the second is the network manageability. So, if you purchase a Cisco router and a Netgear router or a HP router. Uh, in general, it is the burden of the network operator to look into the individual configurations of the routers and then configure them in such a way so that these routers can talk with each other or forward packets from one router to another router. And these operating systems, they being the vendor specific, like whenever you are purchasing a router from Cisco, the network operating system is coming from Cisco. Cisco internet operating system, iOS or any other operating system. Whenever you are purchasing a router from Netgear, the operating system is coming from them. So, because the operating system and the firmware are hardware dependent and it is vendor specific and that is why the configuration or handling the operating system for a network administrator who will actually give the input of the networking policy, uh, for them this entire architecture becomes difficult to handle. Uh, so, because of that we gradually move from this kind of closed innovation network to a open innovation network. So, uh, the open innovation network basically talks about something like this. Now, the vendors will only supply the packet forwarding hardwares uh, which are the dumb switches or we call it as the open switches. Uh, or the blind switches. Uh, so, there are different terminologies which are being used in the networking community. Uh, so, you are getting this packet forwarding hardware from different vendors and uh, then you have a central network wide operating system, this network operating system which is a open operating system. So, now we are basically segregating the hardware from the software or in routing functionalities as we are discussing in the last class, 
we are separating out the data functionalities or the data path functionalities from the control functionalities. So, the data path functionalities are still implemented inside the hardware inside this packet forwarding engine uh, where you have this TCAM implementation. So, it is still in the hardware side, but on the software side you can choose your own software which you can utilize to configure all these hardwares altogether. And then on top of that you can write your own network applications and the advantage is that now you do not need to bother about whether your routers are coming from Cisco or from Netgear, uh, you can purchase the hardwares from any vendors uh, in the world and then you can connect it in your network and all these hardwares should be programmable uh, with the help of this network operating system. So, the only modification in the hardware side is that now these hardwares, the packet forwarding hardwares are programmable hardware. So, these are programmable hardware that means with the help of this network operating system you can dynamically program the hardware so that you can uh, install the forwarding rules or you can install the configurations dynamically based on uh, the network operating system that you are choosing. So, uh, the question comes that with this kind of SDN architecture where we are gradually moving from a closed innovation network to an open innovation network, what are the requirements and how will you fulfill those requirements. So, the things come from here. Uh, so, this was the broad SDN architecture as we are discussing. So, we have the infrastructure layer at the bottom. So, this infrastructure layer have different kind of hardwares like you have the servers, you can have the open switches, you can have the uh, top of rack switches, you can have edge routers or data center gateways. Then we have a control layer uh, in between and that control layer has all the control functionalities which are inbuilt inside that. And on top of that you have different kind of networking application, the application layer where you can write down the network application like the flow optimizer, the network topology viewer, network management application, policy enforcement application, load balancer, network automation, network bandwidth management, whatever application you can think of and you can design on top of that. So, this control layer uh, which works like a brain of this entire network, we are making it logically centralized. So, now the architecture is that we have multiple hardware components which are there and all these hardware components are connected to a central controller. And this controller actually contains the control layer. So, these hardwares are connected over the network as they are there in the normal uh, network. So, because these are just, just a blanket hardware or this does not have uh, does not have any kind of software inbuilt, uh, we call it as the blind hardware or the open hardware uh, and uh, in uh, uh, case of uh, uh, normal networking terminology rather than calling it as a router, we call it just like a dumb switch. So, this dumb switch does not have any knowledge about what to do, neither layer 2 knowledge nor layer 3 knowledge. And this controller whenever you are programming this controller, this controller will actually configure this dumb switches dynamically put the intelligence inside the switch. Now, this controller has all these different kind of module which can be there like you can have a GUI module, the cluster module to form a cluster, the layer 2, layer 3 module to implement the layer 2 and the layer 3 functionalities of the network protocol stack, the VPN module to create a virtual private network, the quality of service module or access control list module to implement uh, access control list or quality of service, DHCP module to implement DHCP protocol. And the plugins uh, which we call normally as the southbound plugins to interact with the uh, programmable infrastructure layer. So, here you have two different interfaces from the control layer. From the control layer one interface that talk with the applications different kind of applications that we call as the not bound interface and then with the control layer to the infrastructure layer we require another interface which is called the southbound interface. Now, uh, the task of the not bound interface is to understand this individual application layer program 
and these application layers programs are implemented by utilizing uh, your favorite programming language. So, you can use Python, you can use Java accordingly you have to choose the controller. So, for example, uh, in a typical HDN network if you are uh, familiar with Python you can choose the POX or RU kind of controller. Uh, if you are familiar with Java programming language, if you want to implement your application using Java programming language, you can use open daylight controller which support Java programming language. So, uh, you can write down this application with your favorite programming language and the task of this not bound interface is to understand what is written inside the application, compile the application to the corresponding network protocol and then uh, map it to one of these modules which are there. Uh, inside the controller. So, you can utilize this module to write your own program. So, for example, with the help of you can write a load balancer application where you can utilize the layer 2, layer 3 forwarding module to forward the packet to a, a specific destination. Now, this control layer uh, from this individual network functionalities, they have to convert it to the rules, the rules that will be programmed to the router and whenever an incoming packet comes that rule will be executed. So, uh, from this individual network protocol to the rule conf um, conversion that is done by the southbound interface. So, we will look into the details about how these rules are being uh, implemented and how you convert a particular protocol to a uh, corresponding rules in the uh, STN terminology or in the open flow terminology. So, uh, what we require? In summary, so to talk between the network operating system and the corresponding infrastructure, we require an open interface to the hardware so that uh, you do not depend on the corresponding vendors uh, to program your network. Uh, we require an open interface to the hardware for that. The second thing is that we require an open API for the application development. Uh, so, that any application developer can develop a network application. And the third thing is that we require an extensible operating system to convert the programs to the rules. So, uh, these applications they are nothing but a program from that program we need to map it to the corresponding rule which will be executed at the TCAM hardware of the packet forwarding engine which is there inside uh, the switches. Well, so what is OpenFlow? So, OpenFlow is a protocol for controlling the forwarding behavior of Ethernet switches in STN network. Initially, this concept of OpenFlow was uh, released by Kinslet program at Stanford and currently the specifications are maintained by Open Networking Forum. So, the interesting fact is here that now this entire networking architecture they are becoming open they are moving from a closed community or a from a vendor specific community to an open networking community where every vendors join all together. So, the vendors are building their uh, hardwares and the community is building the uh, open source operating system and the interface to interact with the corresponding hardware. So, this helps in two ways. First of all, uh, it makes the innovation specific or uh, it makes the innovation uh, rapid because now this entire software is open to the community. You can design your own network protocol and test on a hardware for that you do not need to search for an uh, hardware where you can implement your own protocol. You can purchase any STN uh, supported switch open switch and then you can do your protocol implementation on top of this uh, open source operating system. And the second advantage comes from the network management perspective where the network administrator they do not bother about reading the thousand page manuals for uh, from three different vendors. So, they can just concentrate on a specific operating system and then try to write their own rules on top of that specific network operating system. So, uh, in terms of HTN messaging interface as we are mentioning that from network in operating system to the uh, hardware, we have the southbound interface. Then uh, from the network operating system to the application, we have the northbound interface that provides the programming API. 
and then this network operating system can be implemented in any open source uh, operating system. There are multiple uh, standard industry specific operating systems which are available nowadays. Uh, you can explore that. Uh, there are this ONAS operating system which is very popular nowadays. There is this RU controller which is a lightweight uh, controller. Uh, currently many industries they are utilizing RU controller to write network programs and then other controllers like Mastro or Open Daylight. So, as we are mentioning at the uh, application layer side, you have a programming API in your preferred programming language. At the control layer, you have one of the network controller, ONOS, Mastro, RU or Open Daylight. And at the infrastructure layer, uh, you have this open flow in, uh, supported hardware and this southbound interface is controlled by uh, this open interfacing with the hardware that is the open flow specification that uh, we are talking right now. Now, let us look into that how open flow works. So, we have a switch, the entire switch as we are discussing in the last class, we have the control path which is implemented in the software and the data path which is implemented in the hardware or in more specific TCAM type of hardware. Now, at the control path, we are having a part of the network operating system to interact the client version of the network operating system. You can talk it, it, it is there in this uh, software implementation uh, in the switch that is a kind of very minimal implementation of the control functionalities, just a client version of it so that you can talk with the switches and then uh, you have uh, this open flow protocol, open flow client which is there uh, inside the switch. Uh, so, you can call it as the client version of the open flow and then you have a open flow controller which is implemented in a logical centralized machine. And then this open flow messaging API which normally uses uh, SSL and a TCP kind of message which talk with this open flow controller. Now, the thing is that at the software side inside a uh, uh, switch, you have a very minimal implementation, the client version of the implementation, so that you can just receive a message from the controller, parse the message and then configure the switch accordingly. Remaining protocols, the routing protocols and all these things that you do not need to implement uh, inside the switch anymore. So, here is an example of open flow. Uh, so, at the switch side, you have this open flow client. At the hardware layer, we are maintaining a simple TCAM table. So, this TCAM table has multiple fields like source MAC, destination MAC, source IP, destination IP, source port, uh, TCP source port, destin TCP destination port, and the corresponding action that you want to execute. Now, a simple rule looks like this uh, from the hardware layer side that your source MAC is start that means uh, it is a wildcard character that means you can accept any source MAC field, you can accept any destination MAC, you can accept any source IP. Your destination IP should be 128.9.1.10, the source TCP port and the destination TCP port can be anything and if that is the case then your corresponding action will be forward the packet to ETH3. So, this entire thing, entire packet forwarding behavior, we can write it as a match and action pair. So, we have a rule, we, uh, this entire rule that has a component of match. So, we have certain entries in the tables and then if there is a match, then you execute the corresponding action. So, here this is one entry in the TCAM hardware table. So, you whenever you are receiving a packet, you extract the headers at different layers, extract the source MAC, destination MAC, source IP, destination IP, uh, source TCP port, destination TCP port, all these fields from the packet header and then make a match uh, with this rule. So, if there is a match with a specific rule, then you execute the corresponding action. So, the action is to forward it to ETH3. So, ETH3 means this particular router where you want to forward the packet. So, uh, here the message that I want to convey to you is that any such network protocol or 
better to say most of the networking protocol we can implement it in the form of a match action pair. We will see some examples of that as well. So, uh, there is a tremendous power of this entire open flow protocol or open flow architecture. So, let us see one interesting use case of open flow. So, assume that Bob wants his own set of network rules to forward this packet. So, we have a network controller here. So, this is the controller and these are the HDN switches uh, which are the dumb switches as we have mentioned. Uh, now, Bob wants uh, his own forwarding application. Say Bob wants to forward a packet from, uh, from this router, say router 1, I am naming the routers as router 1, router 2, router 3 and router 4. Now, Bob wants to forward a packet from a machine which is connected with router 1 to a machine which is connected with router 4. This is the destination. So, and Bob wants that the packets need to be forwarded from R1 to R2 to R4. Now, what Bob does? Uh, he basically write that this entire thing uh, in a application program inside the controller. So, the controller combines that program, compiles that program. And after compiling the program, the controller simply deploys Bob's forwarding rule in the required hardware. So, whenever Bob want to forward the packet, this forwarding rules which are there in the respective uh, switches, they get executed and the packet gets forwarded. Now, when Alice wants her own set of network rules to forward a packet, Alice also program the same controller, write her own application on top of the controller and then the forwarding rules are installed in the uh, routers uh, on through which Alice wants to forward the packet. Now, here you can see the interesting things that all the routers do not need to have all the rules. So, Bob wants to use this router 1, router 2 and router 3. So, this router or let us not use the term router, let us use the term open switch. So, uh, Bob wants to use these three switches. So, the rules are installed on that three switches and when Alice wants to uh, forward the packet, uh, Alice wants uh, the packet to be forwarded from R1 to R4 to R3. So, the rules are installed in those switches. So, uh, if we look into the open flow flow table, the open flow flow table has uh, four different components. Uh, you have the rule, the corresponding action, certain statistics about um, packets, the execution of a particular rule and the priority value which is associated with a rule. So, the idea is something that, so you have a rule. So, the rule is nothing but a set of fields uh, and that field basically says that uh, in which particular field of an IP packet or here actually in HDN you can look into MAC, IP, uh, TCP all the headers. So, in your packet header which particular field to look into? Theoretically, you can look into any field inside the packet header. Uh, so, uh, you can look into the packet header and uh, a rule basically specifies uh, what should be or what is your uh, interested value for a specific uh, field inside the packet header like the switch port, VLAN ID, MAC source, MAC destination, Ethernet type, IP source, IP destination, IP type of service for quality of service, uh, TCP source port and TCP destination port. Now, if there is a match with this rule that means with this certain fields that you are specifying, then there can be a set of actions and the actions can be designed by you based on your choice. Uh, so, the action can be forward the packets to 0 or more ports uh, in the switch, encapsulate the packet and then forward the packet, modify certain fields in the packet header and then forward the packet, drop the packets if you want to implement the firewall rule or you can add up your own extension whatever you can think of. The statistics fields, uh, it have, it maintains certain statistics like the packet counter, the byte counter, number of packets that have been matched with a particular rule and so on. Uh, so, that it becomes easier for you to get the information from the network. 
and then there is a priority value associated which is the priority of a corresponding rule. So, in case of an open flow whenever you have a set of rules, if there is a match with multiple rules then the high priority rule is uh, executed in general. Here are certain examples of uh, open flow flow tables. If you want to do a switching, you have to look into the MAC destination field because you have to look into the MAC destination field. So, you just make a match with the MAC destination, you can ignore other fields. So, we put it as a star as a wildcard character. If there is a match with this particular MAC address, you forward it to Ethernet 2. It behaves like a normal layer 2 switching mechanism. If you want to implement a firewall, you look into the TCP destination port. If TCP destination port is 22, then you drop the packet. So, that is the corresponding firewall rule. So, you can design your own firewall rule like that. So, look into certain fields in the packet header. If there is a match with those fields of the packet header, then you drop the packet. Then forwarding, uh, to forward a packet uh, rather than looking into the uh, MAC destination, you look into the IP destination. If your IP belongs to this subnet 202.2.star.star, .2 .star .star, you forward the packet to Ethernet 2. You can make a flow switching which is in interesting. That means, uh, this flow switching with the help of flow switching, you can make a convergence between the packet switching network and the circuit switching network. So, the idea of the circuit switching network was to use specific path for a specific flow. Now, by looking into multiple fields in the packet header like the MAC source, MAC destination, Ethernet type, IP source, IP destination, TCP source port, TCP destination port, by looking all these individual fields you can actually uniquely identify a process to process flow because you are also associating the TCP source port and the TCP destination port. Now, for that particular flow, you can make an action that forward the packet for this particular flow to this switch. So, that means you can make flow specific forwarding or flow specific routing uh, of the data. So, that is a huge power of uh, STN based uh, network. Then you can do the source routing, source routing where uh, if the packet is coming from a specific source and it is destined to a specific destination, then you use a specific path. So, you put the source IP, the destination IP, if the packet is coming from a subnet at uh, 16.2.3. star and if the destination is 202.2. star star, the action is forward the packet to Ethernet 2. You can do the VLAN switching, although till now we have not uh, discussed about what is VLAN, uh, virtual LAN. Uh, virtual LAN is basically uh, given a packet, a set of packets. If you want to send a set of packets or a packet to a specific destination, uh, you can forward the packets into multiple ports of the switch, uh, which constructs uh, virtual LAN. Uh, so, later on we will look into the virtual LAN in details, but with the help of this, uh, uh, this uh, open flow rules, you can specify the virtual LAN ID, the corresponding MAC destination and the action is forwarding the packet to two different ports ETH2 and ETH3. That means, ETH2 and ETH3 are actually connected to virtual LAN 2. So, the packets will be forwarded to those uh, interface only. Now, uh, these are the examples of uh, some of the open flow rules. You can design your own open flow rules and the corresponding action. Uh, the entire innovation is open, so anyone can contribute there. Uh, let us look into the messages which are there in general, open flow, uh, the messages which are shared between the controller and the corresponding switches. So, uh, this uh, communication as you are mentioning, they are done uh, via TCP. So, once you have made a TCP connection between the client version of the switch and the controller, uh, the open flow hello messages uh, are exchanged between the controller and the switch. Uh, so, they negotiate the open flow version, the higher version is used and uh, uh, they share certain parameters like uh, what are the different uh, configuration parameters uh, you want to share. Then, uh, the controller sends an open flow feature request message the feature request message uh, to get the data path ID of the switch and determine to, uh, what features are supported by the switch. Uh, say for example, whether the switch supports QSPS forwarding or not. 
Now, based on the application program, uh, you can send certain open flow messages for switch configurations to update the flow entries, uh, to modify the flow entries or to install a new flow entries. There are some other messages like to check the connection aliveness, whether the connection is alive or not. Uh, open flow can send echo request and echo reply messages. Uh, they can be sent from the controller to switch to check the liveness of the switch or the switch can send it to the controller to check the liveness of the controller. Now, to group the flow entries, uh, if you want to group multiple flow entries together, uh, these groups are configured by the controller to this group configuration messages uh, that can be stored into group tables inside switch. So, uh, OpenFlow has a power that you can combine multiple rules all together and create a group of rules. Uh, so, the messages are there to support that group creation. To get the statistic details from the switch, uh, you can you have this uh, open flow messages like flow stats, port stats, queue stats, group stats, table stats, all these things that can be sent from the controller. So, that is another advantage like from the controller you can get the statistics from the switch uh, and you can look into the individual statistics that for a particular flow how many packets has been transferred and based on that you can also configure the switch for um, restricting the bandwidth for a particular flow. So, you have uh, as a network administrator you can get a tremendous power to control your network. Then there are certain asynchronous open flow messages like um, flow rule removal from a switch, uh, configuration apply fail error from the switch, port up down status from the switch whether a particular port is up or down etc. that can be seen from the switch uh, to update the controller. Uh, so, if a particular port from a switch is down, the switch can send a message uh, to the controller to let it know that this particular port is now down, so that the controller can design a fail safe mechanism for forwarding the packet. Uh, so, this is the entire a brief introduction about open flow. Uh, so, now what is happening? The entire power is in the hand of network programmer or the network administrator. Uh, the network administrator controls the entire controller write down his or her own program in the controller and this open flow hem helps configuring the switches. Now, whenever you are receiving a packet, the packet has the payload and the header, you look into the header, based on the header field you make a match with the corresponding rule and then send a packet in the based on the action which is there, uh, which is mentioned in the corresponding open flow table. So, the rules in the open flow table uh, inside the switch, they are implemented as a part of the uh, TCAM hardware. So, TCAM is a programmable memory where you can dynamically uh, program that particular hardware to install the rules. So, this is a very brief introduction of open flow. Uh, we will go for certain demo of open flow in the next class. Uh, before going to that, uh, uh, so, I am just giving you certain pointers that you can explore yourself to look more details of this entire open innovation in the networking community. Uh, this is a kind of advanced topic in network uh, and uh, you should learn that because uh, people predict that our future network is going to be STN controlled. Uh, so, there is a link for open networking foundation where you can find out the different uh, standards, different uh, agendas which are there under the open networking foundation, the open flow specification, the current version is table version is 1.5.1. Uh, you can look into the different messages, their messages type, their functionality all these things. The ONAS, ONAS is a popular uh, network controller. Uh, you can look into the ONAS uh, details, it is a open source thing again you can just install it in a single machine and start using it. There is another STN controller called Ryu, uh, I suggest you to look into the Ryu controller as well. Uh, so, these are all open source tools, uh, you are free to download them, free to use them, so explore them. That is uh, all about uh, the course today, thank you all for attending the course, happy learning.